Hello St. John's, this is Chris Roussel. Today is Wednesday, April 14th, and this is our weekly update. By way of prayer this morning, there is a very brief prayer in the Book of Common Prayer on page 816. The title of the prayer is for the mission of the church, but it fits so well in its language with the Easter season that I thought I'd offer this as our prayer today. Let us pray. Ever living God, whose will it is that all should come to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, inspire our witness to him that all may know the power of his forgiveness and the hope of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. For the mission of the church, page 816 in our Book of Common Prayer summarizes quite well the whole focus of our Easter season. We continue to gain momentum with folks getting vaccinated and feeling comfortable coming back into our worship space for services, uh, two services on Sunday, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m., as well as our 12.10 Wednesday Eucharist. The 8 a.m. and 10.30 services, of course, are held in the church as usual, Uh, social distancing required, continuing to wear face masks required, Uh, and the 12.10 Wednesday Eucharist, we're allowing up to 10 people here in the chapel. Uh, Because it's a smaller space, we thought it was better to keep that number to to, uh, somewhat limited. So all three of those services, however, do require pre-registration so that we can keep uh, an eye on the numbers. And as we've said before, if we have to to, um, contact trace, uh, that'll be done much more easily if we have a list of who had registered and who had attended. So when you come in, you actually, you get checked off. Now, in regards to registration, Some folks have had some challenges and difficulties with registering. We are aware of those. Um, We're trying to work through some of those. So let me give give you a couple of pointers. Um, First and foremost, if you try to register and the system asks you for a password and you have no idea what that password is or don't remember setting a password, then please reach out to Nicole either by phone or by email and she will assist you with resetting that password. Why would it, the system, the Realm system, ask you for a password? Well, there are a couple of reasons. The primary reason we're discovering is that some folks in our parish never did um, set up the, their Realm account. They're in our system as parishioners because we put them in when we got the system years ago, but our parishioners have to uh, log in and become part of the system by, by setting up their own password. Um, by way of example, <clears throat> We have in our system 1,500, yes, 1,500 different names of people. That's, that's, uh, you know, both spouses, that's children. Uh, So it's a a big database of 1,500 people. Of the 1,500, only 250 people have gotten their password and actually logged in and used the system or have used it at least once. There are 400 folks who have gotten an email from us with an invitation to set a password and be a part of Realm, but 400 folks have not replied to that invitation. Either it's gone to their spam folder or they've ignored it or or have not wanted to participate. Let me just say that Realm is an incredible tool that allows our staff and our ministries to communicate with one another with great efficiency and efficacy. It is not a cheap system. So we've invested a lot of energy and finances into the system for the last several years. We wanna maximize the use of the system and make it work for us. We know that it's a good system. We've spoken to other churches about other systems and this seems to be really the cream of the crop, the top notch system for church um, administration and management. Um, We've even shifted all of our finances over to um, to Realm. Uh, You know, one of the things you 
you can do in Realm is you can go into your profile and you can see where you stand with your pledge for, for this year, for last year, um, and that kind of thing. So it, it's really a, it really is a great system. I can't say enough about it. I know some folks feel a little bit intimidated with it. Um, just get in there, roll up your sleeve. You're not going to break it. You're not going to break your computer by getting into it, but play around with it much in the same way that you might play around with Facebook or Instagram. And I know there have been a bunch of you out there that say, I don't do Facebook and that's okay. But it's, it's really, it's, um, it's a good system and it's one that our team, our staff and our ministry leaders are dependent upon, but it's only as good and effective as our parishioner engagement and involvement with it. So be not afraid, my friends. Get in there and try it out. If you do need a password, reach out to Nicole, and I hope that you'll discover that it is easy to navigate and it's easy to use, and it's got a wealth of information about things that are happening in and throughout the life of St. John's. We are in need of nursery volunteers um, we have a staff member, someone who is uh, on staff, uh, a paid person who will coordinate and manage the nursery each Sunday. But as I've said before, that individual, for safety reasons, can't be down there with the children by herself. And so we need volunteers to help round out what we need. If we cannot get nursery volunteers, then we'll have to go back to withdrawing that as a, um, as a benefit, as an offering to our young families. Also, if over the course of time we see that it's not being utilized, we may have to revisit um, it, it, whether or not this is the right time to have our nursery reopened just yet. I, I want it to work out, I really do, um, but in order for it to work out, we've all got to sort of pitch in and help out in order to um, make it work. Same thing happens with Children's Chapel. We need assist, uh, some volunteer assistance with Children's Chapel. Miss Brooke at the 1030 service will take the children out as we usually do during the sequence hymn before the gospel. They come into the chapel here, <clears throat> they have their lesson, and then at the sign of peace in the announcements, the kids come back into the main sanctuary to be with us. Again, Brooke cannot be in, in this chapel with the children by herself, but needs another adult present. Um, we have someone for this Sunday for the Children's Chapel, but subsequent Sundays, we don't have any just yet. Um, for the nursery, we don't have anybody for this Sunday, April 18th, um, or for the subsequent Sundays. So if you feel called to that ministry, even if you just help out once a month, once every other month, if we can get a good rotation of folks to participate in that ministry, then I know it'll benefit our children, it'll benefit our young families. We talk about it at St. John's all the time, don't we? We really gotta get these young families involved and engaged in the church, we want them to come to church. Well, they will, but we have to be able to um, offer them some things that aid them in their spiritual growth and development and the spiritual growth and development of their own children. Finally, this Sunday, April 18th, is an Evensong service at 5 o'clock p.m. As I've said before, Peggy and the choir are preparing for a trip to England, which we hope takes place this summer. And these even songs are part of that preparation. Uh, you will need to pre-register in order to attend, but please come out and support them with your prayers um, and with your presence. That's all that I have today. God bless you. Thank you so much. If you need anything, please feel free to reach out, send me an email, give me a call. I'd love to hear from you. Be assured of my prayers, be assured of my love, and I look forward to seeing you all very, very soon. God bless.